Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to create yet another JCM 800 patch using the Axe FX3. And I have several goals, several things in mind for this particular patch. Number one, and first and foremost, I wanted this just to be sort of an everyday kind of basic, good sounding JCM 800 Marshall patch. No fancy effects, uh, just warm, smooth, lots of sustain, plenty of gain, uh, that kind of stuff. I want it to be able to chug. I want it to be able to have good note definition for when we play our chords. And I also want it to uh, be easy to solo with. So very playable, is playable is the word we're looking for here. I also wanted something that would sound good through my cheap computer speakers just here in the room. Uh, that I could use for other, you know, technique demonstrations and those kinds of things without having to go through the hassle of recording it into the computer. And finally, I wanted this just to be a basic sort of platform for me to do more experiments with. So this is just a good starting point, uh, sort of basic high gain sound, good for rhythm, good for chords, good for soloing, just sort of an everyday driver kind of thing. Okay, so we have a very empty patch in front of us. Uh, I'm going to click on Quick Build, which will give me just a list of all the blocks here, and we can just start dragging stuff in. Uh, I didn't know about this little feature before, but now that I do, it is really awesome. So we're gonna give ourselves an input and an output, and we're gonna go ahead and throw in our basic uh, blocks for this patch. So amp number one, cab number one, and then really the only other thing that we're going to add here is a parametric EQ uh, to sort of give us a little boost for our solos. Let's connect this stuff together and see what we have so far. So this is the basic Brit 800, and it looks like we're going through the 1x4 Pig 57. And here's what that sounds like. <laughs> sounds very one by four. Uh, I don't know if this is just what mine defaults to, but this cab has got to go. So I'm gonna go looking for Legacy 125, which is my go-to cab at the moment. Someday I will try out other cabs, I promise, but there's just, uh, there's just too many of them. All right, with the Legacy 125, it goes like this. <laughs> Uh, some other things I need to do uh, for my input, I'm going to bring my threshold up to minus 40. Uh, seems to be good as far as keeping my guitar noise at bay. And then my output, we're gonna put that at minus eight uh, because we are gonna do some tweaking here that's gonna make this thing a little bit louder. Let's take a look at our amp block here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna do everything we can to add some warmth and some sustain uh, and uh, some playability just here in the amp block without adding any uh, compressor blocks or anything like that. So let's see what we can do just with these amp controls. Okay, so for the Brit 800, the first thing I'm gonna do is crank my master volume up all the way to 10. It works really well on this particular amp. Other amps, it's hit or miss, you never know. But with the Brit 800, cranking your master volume all the way up to 10 uh, makes it really, really nice to play. So now it sounds like this. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mess with my drive knob here. And uh, what I'd like to do is I want this thing to kick in above the 12th fret. Uh, so the way that you do that, you right click on it and you get your um, modifier edit page. So the first thing we need to do is choose a modifier. In this case, we're choosing pitch follower, and the pitch follower is what is going to modify our gain parameter for us. So the minimum, I would like it to be at where it is right now, which is right around five. Okay, and my maximum, I want it to be all the way up at 10. Now I want this thing to only engage above the 12th fret, and so what I've found is that you need to mess with your scale and your offset, uh, at least for me, uh, to help it only engage above the 12th fret. Uh, so offset is going to, uh, 
we're going to push that all the way to minus 100. And then scale is going to end up somewhere around 2. So we just type in 2 there. So if we take a look at this uh, little graph here while I play, uh, you'll see that it will engage uh, a little more accurately as we get above the 12th fret. <laughs> Okay, now that our drive is taken care of, uh, let's pop down to the ideal tab here. Uh, high treble. Uh, I'm going to cut that all the way down to minus 12 dB. And my goal for this is to get rid of any sort of squeaky, scratchy, ultra high frequency stuff um, that is hanging out. I think that'll help at least by what I've gathered from reading the manual, although I could be wrong on that. I'm still learning. It's extremely complex. Uh, some other stuff we're going to do here in this tab is I'm going to uh, turn on my input boost and I'm going to turn on my fat switch. Next, we're going to go down to our power supply tab and uh, the variac setting, we're going to stick that around 80. And this will add some more compression. It'll help with our sustain and it'll also help this thing uh, sound like it's about to explode, which is kind of what we want. Uh, if we go down to the input EQ tab, uh, I'm going to set my input EQ cutoff frequency at uh, around 200 hertz. Now, the reason I'm doing this uh, is because when I switch to my neck pickup, it can get a little muddy uh, down in the lower end if I take that low cut and get rid of it. It sounds a little too uh, doom uh, for me. Uh, so we're gonna pop that back up to 200. So I can be on my neck pickup and do a little bit of chugging down there and it'll be passable. Okay, now. Uh, the dynamics, the dynamics tab, here's what we're going to do. We're going to change our output comp type to gain enhancer, which is the best thing ever. And our output compression, we are going up to eight, which is a lot. But the output compression gain enhancer thing is, uh, is really awesome. And it'll give us uh, some nice sustain. <laughs> Uh, which will make a lot of stuff easier to play. So that's great. All right, let's head over to our cab. Go to my room and air uh, thing here. We're going to set our room level at 20, and we're going to set our air, our air level at 20. And uh, that's going to brighten it up a little bit. The room level thing just sort of, you know, uh, kind of help helps glue everything together. Uh, let's take a look at our parametric EQ. Uh, so what I want to happen here is above the 12th fret, I want a little bit of a mid-range boost, which is also going to give us, you know, a little bit of a gain boost and uh, help our solos stick out, separate them from our rhythm playing. So we're going to take a look at frequency number two here. My favorite frequency for warmth is 325, and we're going to boost the gain on that um, only about 4 dB, but what I want to do is I'm gonna boost that all the way up to 20 just to show you uh, really 325 hertz is the center frequency we're choosing, but our Q is going to be so wide that it's really just gonna be a general, a very general low mid boost. So we need to right click on gain two here and our source is gonna be pitch follower. And for our parameter range, we wanna go from zero, so no uh, no change, and we're going to boost it about 4 dB, which you can choose this according to your taste. Try it out. You know, different speakers, different guitars, different setups are going to give you different results. 4 dB seems to be pretty good for me. And here again, I'm going to change my scale and my offset. Uh, my offset's going to be minus 100, and my scale is going to be 2 just to make sure this does not kick in when I don't want it to kick in. Uh, it 
it's reacting pretty quick. I'm gonna change my release uh, to 999. So 999 milliseconds. And hopefully that'll calm it down a little bit here. I want it to come on quick, but I want it to hang out for a second uh, before it goes back to normal. And I should probably go back and do that same thing to my drive control as well. So I'm gonna right click on my drive control and change the release time on that dampening to, to 999. Uh, just cause I think it'll be a little less jittery, jittery that way. So that is it. Uh, this is all we're doing today is we just want a really good basic martial sound that's gonna be easy to play, easy to solo with. And of course, uh, download it, add, you know, whatever kind of reverb, delay, chorus. Uh, but the idea behind this patch is this is it. We're gonna keep it simple. And it's sort of a platform to experiment further as we learn more about some different blocks. Does it chug? <laughs> Yeah, can we hear uh, can we hear chord tones when we play full chords? Uh, I think so. I think we got some good note clarity there. And uh, can we do some legato stuff? Okay, folks, the patch is down below. Download it, enjoy it. Uh, hopefully it'll sound good on your crappy PC speakers like it sounds good on mine. Uh, I did listen to it through headphones. Hopefully it sounds good in headphones too. If not, I'll give you a full refund. Go forth, pr go forth practice, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.